Um, for the past three years, leader in leaders in education and healthcare in Oregon have come together to explore innovative ways to meet the needs of children and families served by these two powerful sectors. And one of the things that came out of that collaboration is the Oregon Health and Education Collaborative, which is in the process of setting up four design projects around the state that will ask this question. If anything were possible, if we weren't constrained by resources, current structures, laws, and regulations, what would it take to ensure that every child and family in that community has an equitable opportunity to succeed? These are not demonstration projects, but blue sky design efforts to identify what the key factors of that system would look like, how much it would cost to capitalize it for five years, and the kind of new community-based workforce that would be necessary uh, to implement it. In short, the goal is a moonshot conceptual design to create the blueprint for a child success model. Now, as you think about what that would mean for our children, if we could actually be successful uh, in that endeavor, let me leave you with the words of Albert Camus by paraphrasing something that he wrote in 1948. Perhaps we cannot prevent this world from being a world in which children are harmed, but we can reduce the number of harmed children. And if you don't help us, who else in the world will help us do this? Today, we know the causes of childhood trauma and adverse experience. We know how to mitigate and prevent them. And we can identify the children and families who need those services, who need that help, by zip code, by neighborhood, and almost down to the household. By 2030, seven years from now, we should be able to reach a point, a destination in this state where zip code and race and ethnicity and language no longer are predictors of your success or lack of success. In Oregon, where every child, in fact, has an equitable opportunity to succeed.